if you completed school, homeschool with a seventh grader, with a teenager this year, you deserve a cup of coffee. Go to Starbucks, get yourself a treat, a big frappuccino, a milkshake, something. You deserve a treat because let's just be honest, homeschooling teens is a whole new ball game. I don't know about for you guys, but it, it's been eye-opening. It has been full of joy and so, so many good things, but it has had some challenges too. Today's video is part of a little series that I have been doing. If you've been watching my channel the last few weeks, you know that I have been sharing videos, wrapping up our homeschool year, going through each of my individual kids and telling you what curriculum worked, what didn't, and all of the in-betweens. I'm also going to be sharing a video where I talk about our group subjects that we do as a family. Yes, gather round and other things like that. So stay tuned for that. If you are new, my name is Sarah. I am the homeschool mom of five kids. They are currently ages 13, 12, seven, three, and one. We are currently finishing up our ninth year of homeschooling, and if I had to label our homeschool style, I would say we are pretty eclectic. We have a very good mix of unit studies, Charlotte Mason, and some traditional homeschool styles. So today I wanna to focus in and talk all about my son Noah, who is 13, almost 14 years old, and who is finishing up his seventh grade year of homeschooling. Now, Noah, he is my oldest, he is my firstborn, and poor thing, he is the guinea pig. He has had to deal with a lot from me and from our homeschool over the years. I've learned so much through trial and error with him, and he, he is so patient with me, and I'm thankful for that. Now, Noah is a visual learner, tried and true, which I love because I'm a visual learner too, so that kind of makes it a little bit easier to teach him. He needs lots of illustrations, lots of examples, lots of visuals, in order to learn well. Now, I'm sharing all of these details about Noah and about our homeschooling style because I wanna give kind of an obvious disclaimer here. I put these on all of these videos that I make like this, but today as I am talking about curriculum, I am sharing my opinions, our opinions and experience with curriculum for our family in this season of life. Your experience with these different subjects and curriculum may be completely different than ours, and that's great. That is the beauty of homeschool. So just putting that little disclaimer out there, just, you know, it makes me feel better. All right, let's jump in and talk about what worked this year. All right, so first up is Matthew C. Noah has been working through the pre-algebra level from Matthew C. And you guys know we have done Matthew C. from preschool, from kindergarten with Noah. He is very, very familiar with this curriculum, with this program. That being said, we made a mistake with this this year. I am putting this as something that's working really well, but I, I do wanna share this with you, just be honest. We made the mistake of going way too fast through this curriculum this year. We got to about lesson 12 or lesson 13, and Noah just kind of pulled me off to the side and said, Mom, I, I feel a little over my head. I feel a little confused. Can we just stop and start over again? And so we did. We started right back at the beginning of this book at the end of November. And so I utilized the online worksheets and drill pages that Matthew C. provides. And we went back through, watched the DVDs again, and reviewed all of the lessons. And so now we are currently about halfway through pre-algebra and that, that's a great place to be moving into eighth grade. He will continue to work on this a little bit through the summer, but Matthew C. has been wonderful. I would just definitely encourage you to always make curriculum work for you, not the other way around, and don't ever be afraid to slow down, take a break, or go back and review things. All right, so as I mentioned in my sixth grade video with Leah concerning Matthew C., I do have two supplemental items that I definitely want to highlight to go along with Matthew C. First of all is just a personal DVD player. 
This has been so helpful for each one of my school age kids to have for their homeschool. They were able to watch their Matthew C. lessons, DVDs on their own, on their own time. They didn't have to ask to turn on the big screen TV or access anything. They had this and a pair of headphones and they could watch their math when they needed to. Now, I know Matthew C. offers all of their videos now online on through their website, but here in our house, we like to be a little bit careful a little bit more strict about how and when our children use the internet so call me old school I don't know I just prefer using these DVD players and just having the peace of mind that my kids can do their math lessons without having to deal with the internet that, that, that that's just me secondly as you are working through some of these upper levels of math you see as you're getting into that more intense math I definitely would recommend buying your child you know a pretty nice calculator this has been really helpful for certain lessons that we have done in pre-algebra. It, it, it's been a really big time saver. If you have your child doing all of this math out by hand, it is going to take them hours to get through a single worksheet. So for specific lessons, it is really helpful to have a calculator. This is just a really simple scientific calculator that I bought on Amazon. It actually wasn't all that expensive. I'll make sure to link everything I can today down below in the show notes in the description box. Next up, another subject that has worked just so so well this year is following Narnia volume one the lion song this is from IEW you guys if you have been around our channel you know that we love IEW style of writing we have been using it for several years in our homeschool and this year I let Noah and Leah pick which level of IEW they wanted to do and they were both interested in reading Narnia as their literature for the year and then doing this as their writing to go along with it now now, this book in particular goes along with the first two books in the Narnia series with the magician's nephew and the lion, the witch in the wardrobe. Now, if you have never done one of these theme-based writing units from IEW, I will say, in my opinion, they are a little bit more difficult than the structure and style levels that you can get with the DVDs where Andrew Poudwa is kind of walking you through and holding your hand through the different lessons. Uh, these, I think, are a little bit more difficult for me as mama as teacher and definitely have a little bit less guidance in that way full disclosure we have not done every lesson in this book we have skipped around a little bit we have skipped some of the writing assignments just as we wanted to and as we needed to and I share that to say you know don't be afraid to think outside the box a little bit don't feel like you have to follow the schedule that's in a table of contents you can definitely rework a curriculum to work for for your schedule and for your homeschool. Another subject that has worked really well, and honestly, I can only say worked well for half the year, is Wordly Wise 3000. Now, this is something that I mentioned in my mid-year homeschool update that we were adding in just kind of on a whim. I just decided I wanted to try out this curriculum and try adding some vocabulary for my older kids. I went ahead and stuck them in book five, because I was not familiar with this curriculum, I wasn't really sure where I wanted to place them. And so I kind of went with, you know, making it easier rather than making it too challenging. And I will say that this was actually a really great place for them to start in this curriculum. Noah and Leah are able to do this completely independently. It takes them about 15 to 20 minutes per day. And Noah said that he actually really is appreciating doing this workbook. He said that he feels like it's helping his writing and giving him exposure to new vocabulary words. And also maybe is helping his spelling a little bit just by, you know, being introduced to words that are outside of the norm for him. So this has worked really, really well. We will definitely continue to use Wordly Wise as we move forward into eighth grade. Something else that has been working really well for Noah this year in our homeschool is his free reading or independent reading. And honestly, nobody is as shocked to say that as I am. Noah was a struggling reader in elementary school. It took him a really long time to learn to read. He had some vision issues and had to do some vision therapy. He relapsed a little bit and had to go through a couple of more rounds of vision therapy. And so learning to read actually took him a good long time. And so it's always been just a little bit of a struggle. He He's done so, so well, but he has just never caught that bug of wanting to read for fun 
until this year. This year, Noah has just really caught a love for reading and I'm, it's just so excited to watch. And so every day I ask my kids to spend a good 20 or 30 minutes doing some free reading. Sometimes they'll do this in the afternoon while my babies are napping or sometimes before bed um, if they wanna stay up a little bit late and read in their beds, I'm okay with that. And so I have caught Noah not just reading for 20 to 30 minutes, but for hours late into the night. And so I wanna to mention too, of his favorite series that he recommends and that have really kept his attention and reading this year. First up, I've talked about this series before, the Green Ember series. This is by S.D. Smith, Noah's favorite author. He loved listening to these on audiobook and for me to read aloud to him when he was a little bit younger. But this year he has just kind of taken the reins and read these on his own and these have been wonderful. Now, the other series I want to mention, this is by Andrew Peterson. This is the Wing Feather Saga. And wow, Noah is just obsessed with these books this year. He loves these. And these are a great series for teen boys if you are looking for a fun summer read for your kids. Right, so this next item is actually not curriculum. It's an item. This is Noah's planner or his calendar or schedule book, whatever you want to call it. Um, but this is just his daily planner where he writes down all all of his assignments, all of the things that he needs to do. Now, I am planning to do a video later this summer about how we utilize planners and notebooks and schedules in our homeschool. But just today to share just a few details about this, I will say that having my seventh grader use their own planner, write down their own assignments, track their own calendar has just been so valuable and so helpful. This has really helped him as a visual learner to kind of keep everything in front of him in his eyesight. He knows what he needs to do. It has made him a little bit less forgetful and has really helped him to be a lot more organized. Now, this planner is just one that I picked up from Michael's. It was very inexpensive, probably around $20 last summer. But what I love about it in particular is that it gives you a month at a glance, and then it has your different days of the calendar broken down, but it has these really nice chunks. And this works really well for our block schedule. Noah is able to kind of write down his assignments that he needs to do for his morning block, what he does before breakfast, um, he can write down all of the things we're going to do during group time and then he can write down all of his individual work that he needs to complete on his own later in the morning and into the afternoon. So just kind of having these three sections has worked really well for him to kind of block out his assignments and his time throughout the day. All right, so now let's move into the not so fun part of this. Let's talk about the things that maybe didn't work so well for Noah this year for seventh grade. This first one is probably going to surprise you. I cannot even believe I'm holding this book up, but spelling you see. So you guys know I absolutely love spelling you see and Noah. Noah loves spelling you see. He likes chunking. He likes the copy works. He loves the dictation. But a few months into seventh grade, he kind of said to me, hey mom, I really wanna work on my spelling a little bit. I wanna improve it. And I feel like I need to learn some of the basic spelling rules. And so he kind of requested to, you know, do some other type of workbook or curriculum that would help him learn some of the spelling rules outside of just chunking that comes in Spelling UC. So he did continue to use Spelling UC throughout this entire year. We will continue you to use this program and love it. But I, I, I'm putting it in the not working section because we did end up supplementing with spelling. So first of all, we tried supplementing with spelling workout. Uh, Noah just really didn't enjoy it. He didn't like it very much. And so then I moved and purchased this Evan Moore Building Spelling Skills. And again, I kind of went back to basics. We went all the way back to grade five, even though he's in seventh grade. I'm just trying to review and give him some basics um, to kind of help him improve some of his spelling. And, and this this was the ticket. This was the money. He really, really loved this workbook. He's actually moving into the grade six workbook and will probably move into grade seven next year. Uh, this has just been a wonderful supplement to Spelling UC. Now, this workbook is definitely more of a traditional spelling curriculum where you have a spelling list that you are memorizing, doing different activities, um, crossword puzzles, uh, copying the words word scrambles, editing, word studies, uh, word families. 
syllables, just really breaking down the words a lot. This is really great for visual learners, honestly. And so we have really enjoyed this spelling book. It has been so, so helpful for him. And I have really seen his spelling start to flourish this year with the combination of this Evan Moore book alongside of Spelling UC. Next up, no surprise, because I've mentioned it in all of my videos thus far and in my mid-year update, grammar. Grammar was a little bit of a disaster for us this year. When I first planned our grammar for the year, I had originally intended to make it a family subject. I was including it in on our morning time or group time, and I was piecing together several different curriculums that I already owned and was just doing a short, you know, grammar lesson each day with the kids. Well, that lasted a couple of weeks and then I burn out and it just kind of fell off the cart and fell through the cracks. And we, we didn't get as much grammar done as I wanted to. And so then by mid-year, as I shared in our update video, I decided to go ahead and pick up Fix-It Grammar for Noah and Leah. This is student book two, Robin Hood. And I was just going to make this an independent subject for them to work on on their own every day just to kind of sharpen their grammar skills. Well. They have worked on this the entire semester. They have gotten more than halfway through the book. Uh, it, it's been fine, but both of them have kind of told me that they're just a little bit bored with it, that it, it's just a little bit easy and that they kind of want to do something a little bit different. And so as much as I love IEW, Fix-It Grammar just didn't work for Noah this year. Now, uh, you know, I love it. It worked for me, but it, it didn't work for him. Now, this last one I'm going to share is probably going to surprise you as well because I mentioned that this Bible study was working so well for my sixth grader. Well, it's not working so well for my seventh grader. This is Meeting with Jesus, a daily Bible reading plan for kids. It's by David Murray. Because we loved exploring the Bible so much last year, I thought that this would just be the natural next step and a wonderful fit for Noah. And, and it was for a few weeks. But I realized that he was completing this Bible study in just a couple of minutes every day. Like he, he's done with it in less than five minutes. It's, it's very short and to the point. And at 13, almost 14 years old, I want him to be digging into scripture a little bit longer than that. But as for meeting with Jesus, I would definitely say that this is probably going to be a better fit for those upper elementary, middle school kids. If you have a child who is junior high, teenager, moving into high school, this is probably going to be a little bit too simple for them and you might want to look for something more challenging. Now, on that vein, while I'm saying that, please leave me a comment. Let me know if you have any recommendations or suggestions. If you have a Bible study or devotional that you have used with a younger teen boy that you would recommend, please let me know. I would love to hear about it. I, I want to start searching and finding something for him to use for the summer, moving into the fall. So if you have suggestions, leave a comment down below. All right, so those are all of the independent subjects that Noah worked through this year. As I've said, I'm going to be sharing a video with our family subjects, our group subjects, and do an end of year wrap up about what worked and what didn't with those. So make sure that you stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed today's video, please take a second, give it a thumbs up and like it down below. If you have not done so already, please subscribe to our channel and leave me a comment. I would love to hear from you. I hope that you are enjoying wrapping up the end of your homeschool year. See you later.